This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. I have two units at this location that have bad VFD drives. This is a carrier package unit. It has a two-speed VFD drive. Essentially, when first stage calls, the unit runs on low speed. When second stage calls, the unit goes up to full speed. It's a Title 24. I mean, I shouldn't say it's a Title 24. It's an energy um, add-on, basically. But our particular energy code here in California requires that units, I believe it's five tons and bigger, I believe, have that two-speed blower function um, to try to save electricity kind of stuff. All right, so here's the interesting thing. We have had nothing but failures on these VFD drives, really high failure rates, to the point that, and I'll pan over here, I have a unit right here that has a bad VFD drive also, and I've already changed that VFD drive. So now, when I ordered this one, I called and talked to the manufacturer, my local carrier rep, distributor, and they told me that the units are on back order. It's now uh, the middle of July, and I was told that at a minimum, those units wouldn't be in stock, the VFD drives, until mid-October, and that I was almost the 200th person to order one of these drives. Like, So anyway, so I had ordered this one, and in the meantime, this one failed, okay? Now I will say, I'm not going to blame it all on the VFD drive manufacturer because this particular location, um, I'm in Laverne, California. We have uh, really dirty power in this area. And that's, that's one of the things I preach about is, is uh, no power conditioning on our equipment. But we still shouldn't have a failure rate this high. So what we, in the meantime, you have to bypass the drive so they have an air conditioner that's working. Well, we just basically bypassed it to where the, the blower is going to run 24-7. I'm not really a fan of that because I just don't want that thing running all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and install a contactor on each one of these units. This unit and this unit, we're going to install a contactor so that way they run just like a traditional package unit. When they get a call for G, the fans will come on. I'm trying to figure out the best way that I want to do this because I don't know that I want to completely remove everything because then when we come back to put the proper drive back in here, we want to be able to plug it back in. So I'm thinking about installing the contactor right here and then temporarily just running power for the coil from the board, um, leaving everything else intact. But I'd like to show something interesting. I'm, I pulled out this drive and I was just kind of looking to see if there's anything that failed on the drive, what it was. It's, it's Obviously you can tell it's been getting dirty in here, but it's gonna be hard for you guys to see this, but there's moisture. There's like, I can see a capacitor in there and there's water dripping off the capacitor inside these little vents. So no wonder these drives I would think would be failing because they're sitting in a moisture laden environment in here in the blower section. I mean, they're just sitting there getting wet internally from all the humidity, you know, and condensation and dew and all that stuff. It's kind of baffles me that they decided to put these inside of here. But hey, I'm not the engineer, so I'm just the dumb service tech that has to change the parts, so. I decided to install the contactor in here so I wouldn't get any corrosion. I still haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do everything. Um, I don't know how the blower motor is going to work in the heating section yet because by the time we get these replacement drives, it might be well into October, maybe November, to, you know, because they told me they wouldn't even be ready to ship till like mid October. So. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and put this in and then we're going to test everything out, the heating and the cooling, and then kind of go from there. I might need to grab power from the ignition board or something for the blower motor. We'll have to see. I'll have to kind of play with it. We're kind of experimenting playing Frankenstein here. Um, just uh, trying to make it as clean as possible and make sure that we don't have any... Uh, I don't want to make it difficult when we go to replace the, the drive later. You know, I want it to be pretty easy plug and play kind of a thing so we're just kind of I pulled the extra slack because there was a bunch of slack from the wires into here so that way I had enough and I just cut the wires and then we're just kind of going right here um, just trimming everything up my uh, I get a little crazy with some of this stuff like for instance these wires right here I can't put uh, connectors on them until they're all even it's just something I, I, I got craziness inside me so I got to pull the slack tight and then make sure the wires are all even, cut them even, then put connectors on them. I just, I'm a freak like that. I use my drill to tighten these down, but I just snugged them, and then you gotta torque them down. Click.
Click. Click. You just gotta torque them down by hand. Um, I use that torque wrench in my elbow. You guys heard the click, right? Um, just make sure they're nice and tight, but you don't wanna use your drill because you'll strip those things out. You just gotta torque them down with your hands. So I ended up just wiring the control voltage directly to the thermostat terminal board. Um, basically, G is coming over here, right here. This unit's powered down, by the way. So G is coming right here. That's where the G wire from the thermostat's coming from. And then our common is just going to the common on the terminal board right there. And they're just running over, energizing that guy. What I'm gonna do, cause I, I can't remember, I can't quite figure out if this unit, or where this unit's relay is on this board. And in all honesty, I'm not really trying too hard because this is the ignition board. So when the gas turns on or when the heater turns on, it can control the fan. But I also, with the type of thermostats we have here, I have the option of controlling the fan with the thermostat during heat mode. And that's what I'm going to do. This is just temporary until we get the new VFD drive. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time trying to figure this out. It's going to work just fine. But I just wanted the ability of the indoor blower motor to shut down, which it wasn't before because we had it wired direct. The one thing I will say is Carrier is pretty smart. I don't know, I should be careful about saying that, but they were nice enough to um, put male female connectors so with this drive you could literally just bypass it by unplugging these and plugging into the incoming side. So they, they, they do realize that there's gonna be drive failures. And uh, other manufacturers will do that too. Lennox does that. Some of the Linux units, the L series or the Energence units, they actually have an auto bypass on their drive. So if it senses that the drives failed, it'll bypass the drive internally through a relay. So anyways, I'm kind of babbling at this point, but yeah, so I've verified that this unit's working correctly now. So we can just energize power. Blower motor started up because we have a call from the thermostat. And then I still have to go down and reprogram the uh, to check the tightness of that belt too because it's flopping a little bit. But um, I still have to verify the, uh, the setting in the thermostat to make sure that um, the thermostat controls the fan during the heating mode. Uh, these have the Honeywell 8000 series thermostats, the newer 8000s, I believe, the Vision Pro. So anyways, I'll go down there and do that, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do them both at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and bypass this drive with the contactor too, and then be done with it, and then program both the thermostats on my way out. This is my other unit. It's pretty much the same thing. Just uh, taking me a lot less time because I just jump in here and I'll strap that plug up too. But the first unit I was working on is right over there. This one, contactor. Uh, all that I did was pulled the wires, because the, there was a bunch of extra wire over here, pulled it up and over into here yeah and just kind of line voltage in the top load voltage out the bottom bring coil voltage over from here same thing and we'll be good to go pretty much did the exact same thing uh, one wire for the contactor coil goes to the G the other wire goes to the C terminal I do like the one thing I do like about these boards is, is they have R and C terminals so you can get 24 volt power for various things duct detectors and all kinds of stuff so anyways, R and C, and then uh, just kind of zip tied it carefully so that way it's not gonna rub out. Going right over to the contactor coil, went color for color on the contactor. Yeah, we're gonna fire it up and test. For, oh, I gotta tie up those uh, plugs so that we don't get sucked into the blower or anything. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be done. This was just a temporary fix for the bypass VFD drives. I just didn't want the customer running um, so long, months basically, with uh, bypass VFD drives and just wasting electricity because they'd just be running those fans 24 seven. So um, temporarily installed the contactors, got them functioning, went ahead and reprogrammed the thermostats to control the fan during uh, the heating cycle or just made sure that they were controlling the fan. They actually already were. I really didn't change it, I just verified it. Um, just to be safe and yeah this will get the customer by basically until we get the new VFD drives and in all honesty I'm gonna do some research I, I would honestly rather leave the VFD drives out of the picture because 
I feel like we're just going to have a stupid high failure rate on these things. Just keep going bad and keep going bad. Um, this isn't the first location where I've had multiples of these ABB VFD drives. Um, and again, I don't know if it's just because of where they're located in the, um, the, the moist uh, mixed air section right there or if it's just a, a, a faulty drive. I know they are the, like the compact drive, so um, I don't know if it's that. I'd be kind of curious uh, what kind of problems you guys have been having, if you guys have been having issues with these VFD drives. Um, I've had a few failures also on the Linux with the uh, Mitsubishi drives also. Um, but again, I also, kind of like I alluded to in the video, uh, do believe that we need to have uh, more power conditioning, meaning power monitoring uh, and safety devices on the load, uh, or basically on the incoming power coming into the building. I feel like well, as technology advances and we get all these um, microprocessor controlled um, VFD drives and temperature controllers, I feel like our failure rates are going to go a lot higher, especially in the areas where we have dirty power. Um, here in Southern California in the summertime, we get low voltage issues. In fact, at this particular location in the summertime, they get uh, multiple times in the, light, in the previous years, we've had a lot of electrical failures. Um, and then we've also had really low voltage, as low as like 100. I think one time I went in there, it was like 185 volts So um, for the, the 208 volt circuits. And obviously that's at the threshold of being too low. And another thing that I've noticed too, with a lot of microprocessor controlled um, uh, components, that the threshold isn't 10% anymore. A lot of times the, the minimum voltage is a lot higher than the normal 10% um, you know that you we've had on our equipment for so long basically so I noticed that you know low voltage issues in the 190 range really start to affect a lot of the microprocessor controlled equipment that's just an observation of mine again I'm getting too geeky with some of the stuff that I really don't shouldn't even be talking about so because I really have no business talking about that I don't know exactly what I'm talking about but um all right, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. Uh, give me some feedback. Let me know if you guys are running into these same issues with these VFD drives on the carrier units. Um, send me an email, hvacrvideos at gmail.com. Also, pay attention. I do live streams typically Monday nights at 5 p.m. Pacific Coast time, permitting that I don't have to work late or anything, um, where I answer questions and just kind of discuss things similar like I'm talking like right now. But usually people will email me questions, leave comments, and I'll address them, and then I usually have communication with the live chat. So come check it out. Uh, it's on the same channel, Monday nights, 5 p.m. Pacific, okay? Other than that, we will catch you guys on the next one, okay?